day to our virtual boardroom, which is titled Get Closer to Your Perfect Week. It's been facilitated by HR Recruit and Daryl Woodhouse. My name's Jo Thompson and I'm a consultant for HR Recruit. I'm joined today by Daryl, who will introduce himself shortly. Daryl's going to demonstrate how to reduce work stress while boosting life work balance and performance results. If you've got any burning questions during the session, then please put them into the chat box facility. As there is a lot of content to go through, we have allowed time at the end for Q&A. I'm now going to hand you over to Daryl, who will introduce himself and start the session. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for that introduction, Joe. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daryl Woodhouse. Um, I was just saying to uh, Joe a bit earlier when we were doing mic check, I've been nursing a, a really sore throat. So um, I've got lots of honey and lemon here. And I'm going to ask everyone to send me some positive energy and cross fingers that my voice survives the next uh, 45 minutes or so, um, because um, yeah, I can't I can't perform without it. So um, so welcome, uh, as Joe said, and as you all signed up to, this is all about getting closer to your perfect week. Um, we have got uh, a little bit of content uh, as Joe mentioned, and we've got some interaction planned as well. Really keen to get everyone involved, keep those attention spans up as well. Um, we've, um, we've got some really good practical, actionable advice as well. Um, and of course, uh, the perfect week tool, which we're going to introduce. And then as part of the follow up from today, um, Joe will have a copy of, I believe, the recording and the PDF of the slides and the perfect week tool. Um, if you would like that to not if when you need it ready to implement uh, for yourselves and for your colleagues at work, um, because this is uh, transferable you know it's valuable information to everyone um, I'm, I'm an open networker so if you'd like to know a bit more about my background uh, connect uh, send me a message any other questions after after today uh, I'm fairly easy to find on LinkedIn just make sure you spell my name right and I'll, I'll come up at the top and uh, there's a picture that vaguely looks a, a little bit like like me I think you can see how much I've aged in the two years since that one was taken but um, yeah hey ho I'm still here and smiling um, as a very brief introduction, because um, it's probably relevant to uh, why I'm here and, and, and why I'm sharing the, the advice and the guidance I will be. Um, I have I've had a, an earlier career in corporate leadership um, and strategy and, and culture change, managing leading teams in high pressure, uh, high stress and regulated environments. Um, I then left that corporate world and started my first business 11 years ago, and I've scaled that up into an international company working with uh, business leaders, managers, and their teams across entire organizations, small ones, medium and large uh, across the globe, uh, helping them with growth, helping them to fulfill their potential. And some of that is about productivity training. Some of it's about strategic management. Some of it's about leadership development. There's lots that we do. Um, and uh, and, and it's, um, it's a real pleasure to uh, be able to have started my own business, scaled it up and doing what I love, um, which is always about helping and developing people. Now, um, <laughs> usually um, most people that I meet through uh, these sort of online workshops and through the, the training and, uh, and the website inquiries and all of that jazz, um, there's usually a lot of good intention and, and will for help and advice on how to have a better life work balance, how to reduce stress at work, how to get better at productivity, get more done in less time. Um, the big but is that we then really struggle with the time to then go and implement and make the changes because there's too much going on. And it's very easy for us to come away from a session like this feeling energized and feeling full of new ideas and actions. And then we go straight back into the day job, straight back to being busy, emails, phone calls, meetings after meetings. Don't forget those meetings about meetings, those ones. Yeah, we've all had those. Um, and uh, and then we have the intention to come back to it, but then we, we, we sometimes don't, or it's a lot longer before we do. And then, hey, guess what? Um, statistically, we forget 75% of what we learn um, within 24 hours. So it's no wonder that that taking action piece is quite difficult. Um, however, if you stick around uh, to the end of the session, for the Q&A. Um, if you hear me out for the advice, you'll see how simple some of this stuff is and we're going to help you come away with a, a, a minimum of a top two or three actions that you can go and implement straight away and you'll see the benefits straight away. Um, impact on all of these things that you see on the screen here as well. And this has been my 
specialism expertise for a few years now and um uh, and it's it's always pleasantly surprising as to how much help people need with these topics um but also how quickly and easily we can create improvements for them a lot of the advice um is about our time today and it's so uh, it's arguably our biggest asset but we give it away too easily um, and so we're going to give some practical advice to have better boundaries, um, to get more from our time, to improve time management, productivity, uh, decision making, uh, removing procrastination, which 30% of us um, have that as, a, as an issue. 30% struggling with procrastination takes up a lot of time and energy, which we can put to better things. And some guidance. Uh, I'm sure you've all been on, on workshops and trainings before, um, but as you'll see on the bottom right of your screen here, uh, have a, follow those big red arrows. Um, red is a, a deliberate intent uh, behind, uh, behind that color choice. Um, to help you get the best from today, I recommend you be present, be on camera, turn off uh, or minimize any distractions, notifications, phone calls. Um, you know, make sure you've got your pen and paper ready um, to, to capture thoughts, questions, uh, key action points as we go through, especially the ones that are new to you um, and also the ones that maybe aren't new, but you know that you could be using them more consistently or maybe you just fell into back into an old habit and you needed that reminder. So get that on the action list. I'm going to prompt you again at the end as well to book a VIM. That is a very important meeting. Um, no other parties will be involved. It's going to be a meeting for just you. And it's, to, it's a strong recommendation to book even half an hour, 45 minutes in your diary, perhaps for next week um, or before this weekend, even better, while the memory is fresh. And just regroup for your notes from today and then plan further time and tasks in your diary of when you're actually going to go and implement and use that stuff. Very simple point, but uh, I can tell you that uh, even the most successful uh, leaders, managers and workers um, kind of forget sometimes to do that. So uh, I will remind you of that again at the end. And above all, I hope that you, actually, you will enjoy uh, today. And of course, tell your colleagues, tell them all, tell the world about this amazing workshop. And I'll, I'll expect my phone to be hot and ringing all day, every day for the rest of my life. It'll be amazing. <laughs> and hey, guess what? The advice I'm sharing today, have a look on the screen. That's me, the old me. All these best practices, principles we're going to go through today. I used to ignore it. I used to resist it. I used to hate it, to be honest. I didn't like having too much structure. I liked kind of um, taking each day as it comes and being reactive and working really, really hard and working long hours. I, I kind of enjoyed it and just, um, just got on with it. Um, but guess what? Um, I was burning out for a number of years um, and I thought I could manage it. I thought I was quite young. I thought I was uh, um, uh, fairly skilled at, at, my, at, my, at my job and my business. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, I kept working really long hours um, for, and had done for many, many years. And uh, I was ignoring the signs from my body, my clever body uh, of, of, uh, of, of burnout lurking and, and being on the way. And uh, I thought I'd be fine. Um, I, I kind of uh, had adopted it a little bit as a, as a culture from um, my earlier corporate career. But you've got to work those long hours if you want to work up the career ladder. And if you want to get those bigger bonuses and those maximum pay rises, you've got to put the graft in. That is genuinely word for word what I was taught uh, by a number of people I used to work for. Um, and, um, and then what actually tipped me over the edge and caused the burnout was... Um, things going wrong in my private life. I had a couple of uh, personal life tragedies in 2016. They can happen to any one of us at any time. You can't plan for them. You can't avoid them. If they're going to happen, they're going to happen. And given how I was quite unwell and not very resilient already, um, that it's that personal stuff that actually tipped me over the edge. And uh, for several months, it was a, it was a really dark place. Um, and, it, and it's not something I'd wish on anyone. And that's where since I've turned my attention more to raising awareness of this and actually helping people learn from my own mistakes um, and helping people master productivity, time management, life work balance in the perfect week. And if you're not convinced about the, um, the, uh, 
the commonality uh, and the frequency of, of burnout. Here's a couple of stats for you. I won't read them all out, but just have a look on the screen. I understand we've got some sound issues, so I'm going to try and speak up a bit as well. A couple more stats on the right hand side I've just added. And some examples of the consequence. Ones that I can personally relate to as well. But some of the good news. <laughs> the good news is that I came back from that burnout. And uh, we're only scratching the surface, surface with how bad it got and, and so on. But a key part of uh, coming back uh, from this burnout was um, redesigning my life um, and actually saying, right, what do I want for my life first? How many hours do I want to work? How much time do I want with my children? Um, you know, and I've got four of them, right? So, you know, they need a lot of my time. I want to give them a lot of my time and love and support and nurturing. Um, and one of the goals I set was to have a four day working week. And at the time, I thought that was a bit unrealistic, but I said, no, I really want it. I think with my uh, time management productivity skills, and if I learn more about those, I can, I can give it a go and at least come close to it and cut out the weekend and evening working, the 80, 90 hour weeks I did for like 15 years to prior to this, this burnout. <laughs> and uh, the amazing thing is that I achieved the four day week within a couple of months really quickly. And I was happier, uh, more energized than ever. Um, I could see and notice physically, I looked much different. I looked much healthier. I had more energy. I felt better. Um, but the best bit, <laughs> as if that wasn't enough, the best bit was that despite working half as much as I always had done, I ended up being more successful. <laughs> I was attracting um, bigger, better speaking client opportunities, bigger brands uh, were coming up and I, and I wasn't working any harder. I wasn't really working much differently other than working four days a week, working more on my well-being, self-care, life work balance. Um, and OK, yeah, I became a little bit nerdy about productivity and I learned a bit more about it. And I added in more of these habits, some of which I'm, I'm able to share with you today. Um, and then I created the life work effect a couple of years ago um, with a mobile app as well. And it's all about helping people who used to be like me, um, helping them understand how they can get better at using their time and their strengths and their resources at work, how they can improve life work balance, how they can improve well-being, energy levels um, and track the results as well and to create some some transformation. Um, and this sort of obviously takes me into some of the work um, uh, over the last couple of years. So um, Joe, now um, if Joe could kindly activate the poll, uh, we've got a little poll, which we'd love everyone to participate in. So you need to do a bit of a calculation here. So um, I'm gonna explain to you the four pillars of the life work effect. Um, and then we're gonna do a bit of focus on productivity today. Because um, that's always a, a really nice meaty one where we can get where you can get some quite significant quick wins. Um, so uh, what I'd like you to do is just think uh, and, and write down on your pads. Um, if you were to give yourself a score out of five for each of these pillars. Five being perfect or excellent. Um, and just to expand on strategy and planning, that's about your ability with and your focus with goal setting, your ability to set out a good plan, either a personal development plan, a team plan or a business plan, your ability to create a really good plan and then kind of stick to it and focus on it and make it happen. Um, number two, productivity, that's about time management, decision making skills. Um, it's about not having any problems with procrastination. Um, it's about getting a lot of stuff done and being really effective with our time. Life work balance. We all want different things in terms of life work balance. Um, but if you're not working evenings, weekends, and you're happy about that and you're pleased about it, then that would be a, a score of five. Um, or maybe it's something a little bit lower. And well-being, that's generally how you feel about your mental health, your physical health, fitness. Um, your time um it's about how kind of how you feel about your time and and the, the balance you have with um 
spending time with family, doing your hobbies. Um, it's kind of how you generally feel within yourself. So just give yourselves a, um, a very quick, and um, don't overthink it, but a very quick score out of five for each of those four pillars. And then you're going to add those scores up and that will give you a score out of 20. That's your life work effect score right now in this moment. So enter those into the poll when you've had a few moments to work that out. And then we're going to go into the practical advice on how we're going to raise those scores. I'm going to sip some more honey and lemon while you guys put out the uh, put out the calculators or the mobile phones. Or maybe a, a pen and paper will do the trick. Once you've um, selected one of the four options, um, don't forget to hit sub submit on the bottom right of that pop up. Let me know when you want me to end it, Daryl. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's I think that's it. OK. All right. OK. So, um, OK, we've um, not got everyone on board uh, just yet, I don't think. Uh, OK, so um, from from those who have done that, thank you, Jay, for helping with that. Um, we've got um, oh, it's disappeared from my right. screen. <laughs> oh, there you are. Perfect. So we've got 13 percent. We're in a one to five category, six to 10 and 29 percent and uh, 11 to 15 was 58. And no one was in the, the top category, 16 to 20, which is great. Uh, we've all got air of improvement. Great. We're all at the right workshop um, at the right time. So let's get into uh, into some action now, um, and uh, you know and what we're what we're aiming for here is to have happier lives and and greater work performance. So part of that, as I mentioned earlier, is about um, uh, what the, the focus we're going to do today. Today is that that uh, uh, second pillar on productivity. It's probably my favourite one. It's quite interesting productivity because actually very few people have actually had any formal training on productivity, time management. Um, yet guess what the uh, the number one complaint is uh, from, from workers across the globe? <laughs> um, it's time management, not enough time. Um, too much to do, not enough time, not enough resources, understaffed. That is the biggest complaint, yet uh, a vast majority of people have not had much support or training. So um, just to uh, level up our uh, awareness and focus on the power of developing our productivity. There's um, a public case study, um, if you'd like to read more on this topic, uh, from Microsoft Japan. They reduced employee work hours by 20% in a week whilst paying them the same amount of money. And they did this initially as a five week pilot. And have a guess uh, what happened to productivity. I'll let you think about that for 10 seconds, then I'll tell you the answer. 40% rise in productivity. So they worked 20% less, 40% rise in productivity. This wasn't a surprise to me um, from having had that burnout experience to then experience in the four day work week. And that's not me saying everyone should have a four day work week. Um, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's not realistic to aim straight away for that, but maybe getting uh, more consistency down to nine to five, five days a week, maybe that would be a good next step. And then maybe a four and a half day week, you know, doing it in bite sized chunks that feels more manageable. Multitasking is just one example um, of, of many that, that really hurt our productivity um, by as much as 40 percent. So um, uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a note there. If you're a, if you're a heavy multitasker, that might be an area to note down to have a little bit of a, a closer look um, and see what changes you can make there. Because uh, it's been it's been researched that it, uh, it it does actually lose a lot of time despite the best intention. And here's another one as well, which we're gonna we're gonna help you with this one directly. And this uh, one on the bottom of your screen here: employees who exercise their strengths daily are eight percent more productive and six times more likely to be engaged. Now that's actually huge, and it's actually quite simple to um, uh, to implement that one. Before we do, um, we want to um, we want to look at the, uh, 
the perfect week in a bit more detail. So first thing is, does it does it even exist? Um, honestly, no, it doesn't. <laughs> maybe with a bit of luck, maybe a bit of a fluke, you'll experience it once. You know, one you'll have one week where everything was perfect, but it but it, it's just not realistic. Um, but by mapping out what the perfect week could look like for you, um, or for your team or your colleagues at work, because everyone's in a different perspective, everyone has different needs and, and challenges. Um, by mapping it out, we can then actually think, okay, right, well, what actions can I take to get closer to that? to actually you know make things better so it's a really it's like a good real uh, visualization exercise so we're going to have a look at this now and get you all involved um so we need everyone to contribute to this and then we're going to look at actually what are the barriers what stop us what things stop us from achieving a perfect week so i'd like you all please to go to um slido.com um, it, it'll just work off the browser on your phones you don't have to sign up uh, or anything like that you literally just go to sido.com or you can use the qr code if that's easier um, and then just enter that hashtag and um, you see on the, the bottom left of the screen here um, so it's 84460060 i can see that one person's typing on there already which is great it tells me it's working now i want you to be really creative with your answers and you can put more than one answer i want to get this uh, this screen filled up it's a bit of a, a whiteboard amongst us all. So be creative, but also have a bit of a, um, a realism. You know, um, wouldn't it be lovely to spend every week on a desert island and not have to worry about money forever? <laughs> um, there's, a, you know, I'm not a magician, um, so I might not be able to help with that one too much. So just think about actually, you know, what would be a good life? Someone always puts peace and, and that, that means a lot to me, that one. I, I, would, I would love for that. I would love to, for that to happen. Have to be optimistic that, that we can achieve that one day. Brilliant. Some great, great examples coming through. Keep them going. The clearer picture you can build of this, is really good for the visualization and the focus to help you change some of those habits and implement the actions that we're going to share today. And Joe, have you got any um, red squiggly lines on your screen or is it just mine? Yeah, no, there's quite a few. Yeah. Oh, right. Excellent. So um, hopefully, it, <laughs> so there aren't meant to be any red or um, fluorescent green squiggly lines. Um, I've got no idea where they've come from, but I'm guessing it's something to do with a <laughs> tech glitch. Um, but it was uh, it was fine five minutes before the session. So uh, apologies for that. It looks um, like a, a baby's been scrolling on the screen. <laughs> really strange. I've, I've never seen that one before. So there's a first for everything, right? All right, keep going. There's more. I can I can feel more ideas, more wishes, more descriptors that can go on here. Ticking off all major tasks. I love that one. Job satisfaction, work life balance. Time to develop myself. That's a good one. Winning the lottery. Did anyone not put that? Or did anyone not think it? Okay, I can see a couple more people are adding to this still, so uh, we'll give it a bit longer. We've got plenty of time, so don't worry. Very helpful um, uh, in the chat from uh, Glenn. So I've, I've 
never experienced this uh, this squiggly line issue before, but I've managed to just turn off annotate. So hopefully that will stop uh, new lines being added, but it won't remove the existing ones. So uh, oh, something to make us smile. Brilliant. I'm going to leave that poll open for a few more minutes. So uh, if you guys want to uh, to add some more, um, what I will do is I will um, I'll take a screenshot of this as well and incorporate it in the uh, the PDF of the uh, slides from today as well. So um, you've all got a, a reminder and a copy of that. And hopefully I'll be able to do it without the squiggly lines. So uh, uh, time will tell. The perfect week and so more squiggly lines. <laughs> so. Um, just to add to that, really, what you've all contributed, um, this is kind of my summary uh, uh, or my own take on, on the perfect week. Um, I've highlighted one in bold there uh, that often doesn't come up, but it's uh, this is a, a, a key nugget of advice here. Um, undertaking tasks at my seniority and qualification level. Um, a, a massive um, chunk of um, lower energy, um, lower engagement, inefficiency, comes from us taking too many tasks that actually aren't really our skill set. They might be below our pay, pay grade and they might be um, uh, tasks that don't actually particularly we don't enjoy or, or they don't energize us. Um, and there's usually an opportunity there to actually revisit um, roles and responsibilities across the team and actually to do a post-it exercise where everyone maps down so I hope you're writing this down, um, but everyone everyone maps on the post-its and then sticks them on the wall and um, what their strengths are, what their development areas are, and then also what are the things that they like doing at work and what are the things that they don't like, or in other words, what are the things that frustrate them? Um, by doing it on post-its on the wall um, or whiteboards, um, it's amazing because you can then move the post-its around to get people swapping uh, so I can swap my weaknesses potentially with say with Joanne because um, with my weaknesses Joe's really good at them so she does them twice as fast as me and she loves doing them you know that's her kind of interest area so okay well Joanne's taking on a whole chunk of work for me there so then we need to free Joanne up or oh, it just so happens that uh, Billy um, has got some on his um, list some strengths of his that are Joanne's weaknesses so we can free up Joanne to take on my weaknesses which she's going to do twice as quickly anyway so it's kind of a double double hit double whammy and then of course we across the team we're going to free up Billy um, you know help him delegate something or swap with someone else so it's a, a really interesting type of um, workshop that, that I'd encourage you all to do it's, it's quite fun and energizing as well. Daryl so, so yes. it's a yeah and um, Claire's put, suggested whether it's worth closing the presentation and reloading it. Maybe you won't get the lines on there. I don't know. That would be cool. Oh, I think I've got a feeling that we're in mind. I think that I've got a feeling that's going to work. Oh, look at that. Well done, Claire. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Round of applause, stand innovation. Oh, no, it's just me standing. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> brilliant. Thank you very much. Now, I've just added um, some more descriptors of the perfect week, bottom right. And just to highlight one there, because it didn't come up in the chat as well earlier. No brain fog. Um, having a week where we don't feel overwhelmed, flustered, where we can't think clearly, where our brain just feels full and tired. Um, that's, a, that's a really good one to, uh, to try and get rid of and a sign of coming close to the perfect week. So um, one more um, uh, brainstorm for you to all be involved in, please. It's the same hashtag as before on slido.com. And now we're going to map out what are the barriers, what gets in the way, what, what stops us achieving that perfect week. Again, be creative, but try and have an element of realism. Um, We've got the um, profanity filter on as well, so um, we can keep it appropriate and respectful, please.
I'm not going to give you too much time for this one. I'm going to be a bit quicker. So I want to get to uh, some of the key actions and the Q&A. We've had 10 participants on this one so far. Let's see if we can get that out to 30 in the next 60 seconds. If you're stuck for ideas, um, just to take some moments to, to, to let the other um, comments and captions that, that people have input, have a look at what's on the screen, let that sink in. Sometimes that might give you other ideas as well of what needs to go on here. Excellent. I know at least one person's listening because someone wrote brain fog. Thank you very much. Kids, bless them. Love my kids, but for them, yeah, it is definitely hard work. <laughs> Rarely a day off, not until they move out. See, uh, not sleeping's on there as well. That's uh, that's, in, that's one I struggled with for, for 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 years myself, actually. So I've got a bit of a experience that one. Very difficult one to manage that. Not setting boundaries, unplanned tasks. Excellent. So again, I'm going to keep that open for a few more minutes, and but I'm going to move on now. So again, feel free. Uh, the more ideas and, and comments we get on there, the better. Because guess what? By mapping out the barriers. We can then pick out the ones that are perhaps, you know, we can pick out two or three to start with that have the biggest impact or blockers for us. And then we can plan what we can do to get rid of them, you know, or to minimize them. You know, it's why this is a, a really, you know, a, a good um, a good format to use. So this format, you're getting familiar with it now. What, what else gets in the way? These are some of mine. Time gremlins, I just want to highlight in, 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 uh, in the bold um, in the bold uh, letters there, uh, third point down, time gremlins. What's a time gremlin? These are all the different people and things that are really happy to take our time and energy just like that, just like that. The emails, the phone calls, the meetings, um, the meetings that we don't really need to be in, um, those emails that we're constantly CC'd to uh, by colleagues where it just needed to be a phone call between the two individuals that started the conversation. It didn't need another 16 people to be copied into a 10, 12, 15 email chain. Um, it, it's incre incredible, and yet it still happens. Um, so if think about what your time gremlins might be. Now's the time to start pushing back on those. If that's, a, if that's a, an area of interest or focus, that's one of your key actions and key takeaways. How can I challenge and push back on some of this more? You know, someone copies me in on a big reply to all CC email chain, which goes on forever when it and it's not relevant to me. Next time I'm going to give them a quick phone call or I'm going to send them a private email and just say, I love you, Joe. You know, you're a brilliant colleague. We have a good laugh. But did you really need to CC me and the rest of the world to that email? Smiley face put it really nicely, try and poke a bit of fun out of it. Um, that approach won't work for everyone, but I can seem to get away with it. Um, probably something to do with four kids and having too many bad dad jokes, but um, but I can work that. But whatever style works for you, um, you know, go and do it. Here's some more for you, top uh, far right of your screen. And I'm just gonna highlight one, just to pick out one, this one in bold, too much emphasis on weak spots. Um, we are in, in we have um, for, for a long time in, in the working and, and sort of business world, we've put a lot of time and focus on weaknesses and development areas. Um, development areas I like more. It's the same thing as weaknesses, but it sounds a bit nicer than, you know, calling me weak. <laughs> right. So um, development areas is, is, a, is a nicer phrase. Um, and. It's a good thing to work on these because, yeah, they are risks, they are threats uh, or barriers to our 
um, exceeding our goals, to moving the team and the business forward. Absolutely. But and now we go into some some of the actionable advice, the, the really actionable advice. But this this is where I'm going to give you the strength in the trio. Um, very simple, but highly transformative um, method um, this is. And it's um, it's largely about having a better balance um, and leveraging our strengths better. So yes, we should be focused on development areas or weaknesses, but my advice is that any time um, we spend thinking or, or working on those weaknesses, we should be doing at least a similar amount of time on leveraging our strengths better. Strengths are strengths to us for a reason, typically because we enjoy do, doing those activities, maybe they come to us naturally, or maybe that we're professionally qualified we did seven years of, of, of study to get the qualification to make that a strength, but maybe we're not leveraging it as often, as frequently as we could. So the strength in a trio is about you taking some time to reflect on your strengths at work um, and then and taking some, some actions, some steps, some reorganizing of your, your diary and your activities to, number one, think about how you can use those strengths more frequently. And you remember that came up earlier when we're looking at those productivity stats. So using those strengths more frequently is a massive productivity and engagement and energy booster. It's very motivational as well, um, as well as the fact that we're using the, 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 the strengths more. Um, and then secondly, second part of the strength in a trio is you want to use those strengths for more time overall. So if you're just using them in half an hour bursts, well, what changes could you make to your work and your scheduling to use it for 45 minutes ago, for, for, for instance? And now the third and most important part of the trio is just because those are strengths for you today doesn't mean they'll be strengths tomorrow. And it doesn't mean that you've peaked at that strength. So this is about what can I do to get even stronger at those strengths? How can I get even better at them? Um, and to take you um, into a different um, way of thinking about this, um, our favorite sports teams or sports athletes, they are amazing at getting stronger. Um, they are constantly focusing on and training on getting faster, stronger, increasing their endurance. Uh, yeah, and they are experts at leveraging their strengths. They also work on the weaknesses, but we can take a lot in the business world. Uh, from from sport, from the sports world, and leveraging these strengths is one way to do that. Right, here's another one. Um, I'd just like you to use um, perhaps the emoji, um, uh, the thumbs up emoji, if you've ever done a speed typing or touch typing course. Let's see how many we've got. Three, four, four of you. Awesome. Okay. So great. Uh, well done. Those of you that have done that. Um, I've done one too. My mum, bless her, she made me do one when I was a teenager because she felt it would help me to um, to write up my essays quicker. This is like, what, 25 years ago. Um, I thought it was a bit of a strange thing at first, but uh, it was like half an hour a week or 20 minutes a week for four or five weeks. Um, and it massively increased my my typing speed. And, and that's a skill I've appreciated ever since. But I know that very few people have actually done that as a course. Um, it doesn't take much time. Tip typically costs about 30 to 50 pounds to do one online. Um, but we spend so much time typing on our laptops, on our desktops. Why not invest a little bit of time to double our typing speed or even treble or quadruple it? Um, so that's a really nice best practice for um, everyone bar the four of you that have already done one. Um, and also, if you have done one, just a little challenge, maybe it's been a while, and maybe you could increase your ty typing speed by another 30, 40 percent by doing it again and doing more practice. Think about the time that we spend typing um, over a week or a month or even a year. It's, it's potentially a lot of time that you can get back for something else maybe an improved life work balance, maybe working towards that perfect week. Uh, meetings is the next big one. This is another common complaint. Uh, meetings, uh, too long, too many people, not structured enough, uh, don't have clear outcomes, often feel frustrated and wondering what's the point. Um, that is a very common one. And um, 
if anyone wants it, I can send you a um, it's a two page uh, bullet of bullet points, um, which includes 45 simple things you can do to make meetings more effective, to make them better, shorter and more effective. Um, you're not going to go and implement all 45 at once, but the trick is to skim read it. It's only over two pages of text. Um, pick out three or four where you think you can have the biggest impact. Go and implement them yourselves and with your teams, and then come back and then pick another three or four. Um, you know, just to carve out those quick wins. Um, but that's a really simple and, and effective one. Um, have a look at this image on the right of your screen. I'm just going to let you ponder that for a moment. Partly because it's a good excuse to drink more honey and lemon to save my voice. So what you're seeing, that's actually um, a set of really moldy potatoes, um, or as I call them, hairy potatoes. Um, hopefully you won't forget this now, and now that you know what a, a hairy potato looks like. Um, but um, you know, if anyone has experience with hairy potatoes, um, they can be very poisonous. Uh, they don't smell good. They don't look good. Um, and um, you, you wouldn't want to touch them. You'd want to kind of uh, hope someone else clears them away. Um, now, the analogy here is like uh, it is for what is for work. And it's the stuff that we don't like doing, the stuff that's typically complex, time consuming, boring, laborious, stuff that requires our concentration for a long period of time. Now, the um, because we all or many of us, I should say, rather than all, but many of us um, have these hairy potatoes at work and we leave them typically leave them off as long as possible. Um, that is actually very damaging to our productivity. So the trick is to get them done, get them out of the way, do them earlier in the day, block more than enough time out in the diary. Um, and, and fight that temptation to just keep deferring them or leaving them last minute to the, to the deadline. By getting them done early while we're fresh and you can get them done quicker, that gives you a further sort of uh, endorphin energy um, rush that then enables you to get the other tasks that you've that, that, that are waiting for you, to, for you to do. But we typically go for the quick, easy, uh, fun things first because we, we want that feel good feeling of ticking things off the list rather than just ticking off this one big thing. But the, the science, the research shows that we need to get those hairy potatoes done first. Here's a couple more of actionable advice. We're moving to Q&A shortly. Um, so uh, plenty of time, don't worry. Um, um, one of my best tools is, a, um, is my calendar. And I don't just use it for my meetings. I use it for planning and organizing my time. And we'll look at the perfect week planner in a minute. And as a tool, which will show you, you know, what that can look like. Um, but this is something that with all the um, all the teams and leaders that I've trained over the last few years, um, very few use their calendar for um, anything other than meetings. Um, and this is a, a and, and then guess what? They get full up. <laughs> I nearly forgot to say this. Then they get full up with meetings. So this is about actually planning in all the stuff you need to do offline as well. Um, and again, having a bit more boundaries about how many meetings we take on. Um, not being afraid to say no more and explaining why it's a no. I can't do this for you right now because uh, the exec need me to complete this by two o'clock this afternoon. It's highly urgent. It's a, it's a key project for the business, but I am free at two o'clock. Um, if you can come back and talk to me then, um, as long as yours isn't more urgent. And then guess what? Most of the time it's not more urgent or they can go and solve it themselves or they can, um, uh, yeah, they can ask someone else. Um, but it's some, some of it's about pushing back a bit more and protecting our time. Um, but as long as we explain why, it, then it's not going to be rude and it's much more professional and we don't need to worry about upsetting anyone because there's been a clear reason why we can help them right now. Um, another one is about planning time for the unexpected. And part of that comes into the perfect week planner, which we'll look at in a minute. And then setting much clearer and stricter boundaries between life and work, clear finish, clear start times, um, and having the focus and self-discipline to stick to it. That is one of the biggest challenges that we face with time management and productivity, um, but it's absolutely possible. But that's, that's within us to have the focus and the discipline. So, um, when we uh, well, after this session, uh, when we share, if not today, then tomorrow, 
um, uh, the materials, you'll have a PowerPoint version of the Perfect Week Planner. It will have two slides. Um, the first one will be blank. And so it's a blank template for you to have a go at populating your own Perfect Week. And the second one is, is an example. So let's whiz you through an example now. And then we go into questions. Take a few moments to have a look at this. So you see we've got mornings, afternoons and evenings broken down. The color coding is to help us remember what the boundaries are, especially the key one between afternoon and, um, and evening, uh, the difference between life and work, or when work should finish and life should start. Um, and then we've got other important stuff, stuff that typically, and again, from research as well, and plus my own experiences, typically stuff that we put off or we defer and because of work choices or kids, um, things like our gym time, our yoga sessions, our exercises, um, all of this kind of stuff. Well, no, we do it, just do it in a, earlier in the day. And if that means getting up 45 minutes earlier or even half an hour earlier to get up before the kids do, um, you just set yourself up really well for the rest of the day. Um, physically, mentally, uh, you're boosting your energy, you're helping maximize your productivity, reducing brain fog, and um, all this stuff is well researched and well proven. Um, so, you know, it's a good call to kind of give this stuff a go, really, um, and have much stricter boundaries. Um, it's a bit like when you're on an airplane and the cabin crew um, in the safety instruction, they say, um, in the event of an emergency, please put your own oxygen mask on first. Um, got to have better self-care by working on being a better version of ourselves we're going to be better servants to our our, our children our uh, our friends our family our colleagues our peers our bosses our customers and everyone now if you as you're looking through the um uh the, the captions that come up you'll see there's a, a few little healthy habits like actually you know this is why i say using the di the, the the diary is um a, a tool for your time and not just for meetings. You'll see um, a 430 in this example, and you obviously need to tailor it to work for you. But in this example, we actually planned in email tidy time. Yeah, guess what happens at 430? That's usually when people are in, in, in meet, last minute meetings or the last few meetings of the day. So that email tidy is being done ineffectively at bursts during the meetings, before, after, in the evenings, when we've got less energy. Um, so protecting your time and blocking it out in this way for all the all the day stuff is uh, is is really important. Um, other important stuff that often gets missed, um, even amongst the most um, good intention and most successful leaders, um, time for romance, date nights with the other half, if you have one at the moment. Um, you know these things are kind of really positive, healthy, and productive habits that often get pushed back or happen less frequently because we allow work to take over our lives a little bit too much. It's time to take that balance a bit back. And if you take these action points, and we've, it's only a short session today, but we've hopefully given you a, you know, a good few to get you started. Um, by, by, by implementing these one step, one change at a time, not only are you gonna improve your life work balance and your wellbeing, but you're gonna have the, what I call the, the multiplier of the life work effect. By having more energy, by working less, and increasing our time management and productivity knowledge and skills, we're actually we're not going to we're actually going to increase our performance at work whilst improving life work balance and well being. So everyone's a winner. The employer gets more output from you, your family get more of you, you get more you time, and this is all the stuff. As I said, I've, it's, it's happened to me. It's from experience, and I've been coaching, training hundreds of, of, of organizations and, and, and leaders in the last few years since. Um, this stuff really works, but it does take focus and discipline. So there's just a few more examples uh, to complete, um, complete the fold there as well. Having a strict sleep routine is obviously a big one as well. Um, you see that we've dropped that one in in the evenings, but also life can be a bit too short and we need to have some fun. So I tend to lose the sleep, let the sleep routine fall out a little bit at the weekends. Um, but I absolutely stick to it on the, the eve before a work day. And it really helps my focus, energy, problem solving, etc. 
some final comments and a piece of advice. Um, do not find time for this stuff. Make the time. Force the time. Book it in your diary to review your actions from today and then use that time to plan more time to go and implement some other changes because the, the, the benefits are, are quite instant and quick and they all add up. They accumulate and create a multiplier effect on that productivity and improving that well-being and life work balance. Um, if anyone would like a free strategy and culture uh, change either for yourselves or for your team, your workforce, um, you just need to contact me. That's something I, I, I'm, I'm happy to offer. And if you want more um, productivity uh, habits and hacks, because we haven't had time to cover hundreds of them today, but um, you've got a free ebook on my website. Um, and in there, there are, um, it only takes, apparently it takes 40 minutes to read the ebook. And there are more than 50 um, actionable pieces of advice. So um, it's like you get one piece of advice for every minute of reading. So it's um, it's pretty high impact. Um, and so now we move into the uh, thoughts, questions and action points piece um, and challenging to you all from what you've heard. You know, what are the things that stood out for you? If you can just pick one new habit a week for four weeks, by the end of the four weeks, you're implementing four new habits. Um, and even that I've, I've witnessed and seen can be transformational for, for individuals and teams. Um, and then a bit like myself, it became addictive for me, this productivity stuff. And then you want to keep adding more and you want to keep getting better, keep getting smarter with your time and your resources. Um, but the, the, the trick is, as I say, don't get overwhelmed with trying to do too many things at once. Just start with two or three things, then come back and then add more to the list. Um, and now we've got a final slide, eh? Um, I want to see up on the screen there, um, what are your key takeaways? Um, what did you like about the session? Um, what were the best practices that stood out for you? What other ideas has this prompted you to have? Other best practices maybe we've not covered today, but you know about them and you know they can be really good for your time management, productivity, and getting closer to that perfect week. So we've got some time now to add those comments on there and. Um, you know, please, um, please uh, come and say hi. Um, ask any other questions uh, if you'd like to live, or you can pop them in the chat. Uh, whatever works for you. I think Joe's going to help us out with those questions as well. Yeah, I've had um, a couple of questions come through to me directly, actually, Daryl. Um, so one of them says, "What advice would you give to an 18-year-old version of yourself about the sort of future of life and work?" Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take that one first if I can. And so, um, really good question, that, and it does come up a lot. Um, younger version of myself, um, just don't ever do the 80, 90 hour work weeks. Um, one, life can be tragically too short, um, and life can be much more um, fun uh, if we make more time for family and hobbies and whatnot. But um, as we've got now a um, whole, whole load of stacks of research and case studies from recent years, um, it is not actually that productive to work so many long hours, as well as causing, like for myself, I've got several medical conditions for the rest of my life that I have to manage daily um, because of how badly I got myself burnt out. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, but would I do things differently? Absolutely. Life work balance from the age of 18. I wouldn't have given so much of my life and my soul to those corporates I used to work for. Um, and, you know, the best bit is, you know, happier life, but far more um, successful and productive with a, a four or even five day working week. Um, Any more questions? Yeah, there's a, again, there's another one come through. Um, what's your favorite like? Sorry, life, work, effect, habit. Oh, okay. That's got to be, okay, my favourite. So my favourite is going to be that um, that team um, strengthener building workshop that I mentioned. Um, so it's something I do with my clients, but I, I, I share it on here. So you guys are welcome to go in and do it for yourselves, but it's where you get a whole load of colourful post-its and you map out um, just to recap from earlier, do you, you map out for it, for each individual key strengths, key development areas, things that you don't like doing at work and the things that you do like doing, um, getting all that out. It's it's really fun and it helps people understand each other better, um, i.e. Um, Sally, it gets really wound up by John constantly being late for meetings. Um, 
and it you know wasting like five minutes of everyone's time um john was just completely oblivious to that but now that he knows he's incredibly sorry for it and guess what he now turns up for his meetings on time so there's even things like that that can be quite fun but highly valuable in terms of the, the productivity and getting more from our limited resources at work any more questions joe um, the final one that's just come through, I don't know why they haven't gone through to everybody. Um, <laughs> how soon are you available for a free strategy and culture steer? That's positive, obviously. Oh, wow. Uh, events. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, <laughs> I've got some plans today. I've got my kids and swimming lessons and stuff, but uh, I, I probably can get one or two in before the weekend. And I've got more time uh, next week as well. So, um, yeah, just um, just message me or on LinkedIn or or send me an email and uh, we can set that up. It'd be a pleasure. There's nothing else now. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Unless anyone else got any questions they want to pop in the chat for Daryl. Brilliant. Well, I can see you've got some really nice set of takeaway actions there on the screen. Um, and, you know, I'll just say, you know, as a final thank you to everyone for attending. Really hope you got some value from it, even just two or three priority takeaways. Um, and, uh, you know, promise this stuff works. I, I'll even guarantee it. You know, go and give it a go. Try it for three, four weeks. Um, and, you know, you know, let me know how it goes. Let me know if you get any problems or get stuck. I'm very happy to, to help and assist. Okay, thanks very much to everybody for joining. I hope that you found it useful and there's something, some good takeaway things for you there. We've got another event this Thursday at half past 12. And the title of that is How Do You Show Up? Why Emotional Intelligence Matters. So I'm going to be sending out an email this afternoon to everyone that signed up. So there will be a link on there if you want to join that session. And there will also be details on the email about how to get a copy of the recording and the follow-up information from Daryl. Um, Otherwise, that all it takes is for me to say thanks very much to everyone and a massive thanks very much to Daryl for your time and effort in putting everything together. Thank you. Thank you all.